Hi everyone, welcome to Advanced GIS. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of uh, what you, you can expect in this class and tips and tricks to be successful. So introducing myself, my name is Dominique. I got my Master's in Geology here at Utah State University in 2020 and a Bachelor's in Geology uh, from Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado in 2017. Uh, after getting my master's, I worked in water quality and stream restoration design in Idaho and Montana, and now I'm working as the restoration consortium director in the watershed sciences department. So when I'm not teaching, the bulk of my job is um, working to disseminate a lot of the great research we do here in aquatic ecosystems restoration to professionals and students to take out into the workforce. So some of the biggest objectives of this course, uh, I want you to take away confidence using ArcGIS Pro. It's not, it's not possible to teach you everything about ArcGIS Pro in this class because it's such a powerful software with really vast capabilities. Um, but I can teach you, you know, resourcefulness, understanding where to find your resources if you run into an error or have an idea for a geospatial question, so how to answer your own questions in GIS. Um, and also find data, you know, Google is always your friend. There's so many different forums and help pages and support for GIS online. So just learning those keywords to Google if you run into a problem is really huge for this class. Confidence, learning that you're not going to destroy anything by clicking around in GIS. You know, you can test different tools. You're not going to break your data, you know, ruin everything by exploring in the software. Good habits, making sure that you're constantly evaluating your results. Arc Pro is in many ways a black box, meaning it's really easy to click through tools without understanding what the tools are actually doing. I want you to be able to look at your results and ask, does this make sense? Throughout the class, um, I'll ask you to evaluate your results and analyses for each lab. Understand the limitations of spatial data. Does it make sense to report analysis created from a 10-meter DEM with millimeter precision? No. ArcGIS will return much higher precision values than you know it actually should. Is actually within the um, limitations of your spatial data. So this is something I'm going to be looking for, especially towards the end of the semester, that you're you know looking and evaluating your um, information. And then we're doing quite a bit of raster modeling work in this class. The intro class focuses a lot on vector analysis, and we'll be doing more raster work in this class. So the big thing is just learning techniques that set you apart. So how we'll go through this class. Uh, we'll have lecture videos every week. Often these are you know, kind of specific to the lab. Sometimes they're more general GIS information. Labs are due on Tuesdays. I understand a lot of you do the labs uh, work over the weekends. Uh, the labs are due on Tuesdays so that on Mondays I can help you with any questions that might arise over the weekend. My email policy is to respond to emails within 24 hours on weekdays. Often it's a lot sooner, especially if you're kind of emailing um, you know, during the workday. And then 48 hours on weekends. I'll sometimes be checking my email over the weekends, but a lot of times I'm out of town, out of service, and it's just not possible for me to you know, respond to those questions on Saturdays. I'd also like you to submit your labs as a flattened PDF. When you go to um, export a map, you can do it as a flattened PDF, a vector PDF, or a georeferenced PDF. Uh, this is an example of you know, a map I made for one of your labs later in the semester. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of different maps. There's a lot of text, um, a lot of vector um, elements to it. Uh, so a flattened PDF is you know, most like an image. It doesn't really retain any of the um, stored data, just you know, kind of an image of the map. A vector PDF will retain a lot of the shapes and colors in an editable way that you can import into something like Adobe Illustrator and keep working with your map and move around arrows and boxes and, and things like that. And then a georeferenced PDF, as the name might imply, uh, maintains a lot of the spatial information. So you can import it into an app like Avenza and take it out into the field and see your GPS point on you know, a map that you've made. It really increases the file size to export as a georeferenced or a vector PDF. Uh, the flattened PDF uh, you know, has a file size under 1,000 kilobytes where the others don't. Uh, these vector and georeferenced PDF is, PDFs will crash Canvas as I'm going through and sometimes crash my entire computer. 
and it really just slows down the process. So you need to submit as a flattened PDF because at times I can't even see a georeference PDF. So you'll be marked late if you submit uh, one of these file sizes that's over a thousand kilobytes. And then often with the labs, you'll be asked to either do a discussion board quiz or reflection. A discussion board is an opportunity to upload an image of your data um, and see your peers, um, see your peers and give them feedback as well. Quizzes, as you work through the lab, there'll be you know different questions, and then you'll submit a Canvas quiz with answers to those, and then a reflection um, is going through and you know noting how your results fit, whether or not the model, you know, you thought the model worked well, ways to improve the model, um, things like that. And then as far as grading, it's really most important to me that you learn the material and grow throughout the semester when it comes to your final grade. Every lab is graded um, on a 1 to 100 scale, and there's a rubric at the bottom of each lab showing you exactly the points breakdown. So I have what to submit um, and then how the points will be distributed from what you submit. You know, really make sure you look at these. Oftentimes students will, you know, forget something that was worth like 10 points and that's it. You've lost 10 points on your lab. So make sure you're looking at the rubric and checking the what to submit box um, on each lab. And then I provide feedback for every lab. You can find this under the grades tab. So you'll get your grade, and then this um, shows you know, your rubric breakdown. Um, I'll sometimes put comments in the rubric. Oftentimes I'll submit a video, um, which will be submitted as a comment, and then there's a video here that you can watch um, where I'll you know, kind of notate on your lab and what, what worked and what didn't and you know, what might have been wrong. Uh, so you'll always get feedback for your labs. And then getting into brass tacks, getting access to GIS software, you guys all should have uh, GIS accounts. Um, I have instructions on how to install ArcGIS Pro if it's not already installed on your computer on the home page um, here under software. Um, yeah, and then I will send out the roster to our GIS administrator so you guys should all have ArcGIS Online accounts. If you don't, please get a hold of me. It's important that you get uh, ArcGIS installed on your computer um, quickly because your first lab is due next Tuesday. I think that's it for now. Please let me know if you have any questions, uh, and I'm looking forward to the semester.